Oh, hi. I'd like to ask you a question. Can you imagine how boring it would be if a box of cereal just had writing on it with no pictures? Not to mention, no toy inside. That's really bad. Hi, I'm Bruce Blitz, and welcome to Cartooning with Blitz. Cartoons and advertising just put the reader in a good mood to read further in an ad or to buy the product or service. And that's what we'll be doing today, creating our own cartoons in advertising. And later on for our feature of the day, I'll show you how to make a stamp, an actual stamp that you can put in a stamp pad and use for notepads or for your uh, school books. And for our doodle trick today, word tunes. Uh, the word bug into bugs. You'll like this one. Stay tuned for that one. So let's get started and let's do our own cartoons for advertising right now. And we'll start with an ad. Now, in an ad, you've got a problem and a solution. And first, we'll do the problem. Now, men and women today have a lot of responsibility. Now, responsibility is a thing, but it's also like a thing you can't touch, really, and it's hard to illustrate. But in, in uh, advertising cartoons, you can actually do that. And I'll show you what I mean. I have a fellow right here who is walking along with his hands up in the air, and his hand's cut off, but that's because we're going to put another element in here, and that would be uh, hidden. Now, he's walking along, and he's going to have a lot of responsibility. And in this ad, that's going to be the problem. Now, watch this going to make a big irregular circular shape coming around to here and let's put some detail in it like that and then I'm going to write on it what else responsibility because that's how Whew, I just made it okay I'll put a little color into this too just to shadow it a little bit and this is how you can illustrate a concept like responsibility. Now, this could be for an ad for uh, an insurance. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's what we'll do. And now we'll have the solution for this. So here's the guy with responsibility. And this could be like for a, uh, you see something like this in an editorial cartoon in the newspaper. Now I'll do the solution. And we'll have the fella with insurance. Now, how would you illustrate insurance? And I'll show you that one, too. First, let's have him right in the center. Big happy guy. So now, he's got insurance. And his eyes, while they're shut, satisfied. U shapes like that. And here's his face. And cartoons and advertising. Cartoons are everywhere. All right, so there he is. Now, let's have him holding, put his hands right about here, his other arm, holding an umbrella, and an umbrella would be a great way to illustrate that he's covered, get it? And here's his shoulder, and his arm's coming around like this, wait a minute, his arm coming out like that. Now let's put a bow tie on them. And on the umbrella, we would write insurance. And that's how cartoons and advertising can illustrate points like that. So we had the problem and we had the solution. Now, in cartooning, you have certain icons that have come to represent certain things, too. Like, for instance, if you were trying to show risk, how would you demonstrate risk? Well, that's another concept, isn't it? But we can do that with the oldest cartoon effect and accessory in the book, really. If you ever see a bomb, they always show a bomb in cartoons like this. I don't think bombs really look like this. I don't think they ever looked like this. Maybe they did at one time. Big circle with a fuse. And then on here, you can write risks. And let's put a face on it, because that's the kind of thing you can do in cartoons, inanimate objects, things that don't really exist or live, and you can put a face on it and make it come to life. Let's give him a sinister expression. The eyebrows down, and his teeth are out like that. Now, I'm going to show you a trick on how to shade something without actually using color. And it's called cross-hatching. Now, watch this. We're going to shade this side. This is going to be the side that's away from the light. The light will be coming from up here, and this side will be the darker side. So here's how we do that with our pen. First, we start with some lines, and it 
gives the illusion of a shading, doesn't it? But we're going to crosshatch it. This is called crosshatching. And that just means going the other way. It's like I'm making a checkerboard. I'm going to have a couple loose ones coming out like that so it looks like it's fading off. And right here, let's go have some more lines going another direction. And you can do this over and over. And you can even have another set of lines right at the very, very edge so it looks like it's getting gradually do the same thing up here. That's a cylinder shape. We want to make it look like it's rounded. So if we add some lines like that. And there you have it. Risks. Make a bomb. Okay, now let's do a sign that you might see for uh, an event, like a flea market. You know where the flea market is? It's where they sell a lot of things, old things, sometimes new things. But yeah, it's an, it, people set up uh, tables, and it's called a flea market. Now, I don't know why it's called a flea market, but we'll draw a flea to make this sign to tell people that there's a flea market one mile ahead. So let's draw a flea, and right here, we're going to draw the flea, and we'll put it in the ad. So we'll start with a shape. Now, there's the flea right there. See that dot? Flea's very small. No, I'm only kidding. Webster's Dictionary defines a flea as a wingless, leaping, bloodthirsty insect, which means that nobody really knows what they look like. So don't get your microscopes out. And here's his eyes. And let's have him like a zany character because he's a flea. So let's have his eyebrows up, his eyes kind of googly. Don't put a nose in. Give him a big smile. I like that. Put some antennas on him. Because like I say, no one knows what they really look like. But they don't have wings. I always thought they had wings, but they don't. Now over here, now watch this. Follow along. Make a teardrop shape. Okay, now, if he's a leaping creature, we'll have his legs out like he just took a giant step. Now, let's see. Well, let's give him running shoes or athletic shoes if he's a leaper. And his other shoes up here. See cartoons like this are everywhere because it really drives the point home. And it's up to cartoonists, like you and I, to keep it that way. Okay, we got his two feet in now for his arms. Well, let's have him pointing, because he's going to be in a sign, isn't he? Pointing to the flea market, which is down the road one mile ahead. So here's his finger pointing, and there's his knuckles. And this arm is behind, you can't really see it, but pe peeking out over this side, we'll have his fist coming out like this. Now we'll put some effects in there to make it look like he's leaping. And that would be like this, the old dotted line effect. Shows where he came from, where he got to, and we'll have this just going out to nowhere like that. And a splash where, he's, where he hit the ground. Maybe a sound effect. Boing. Hope you're following along. This was a real easy sketch to do and very effective, I think. So let's put in some writing for this one. So it might say, flea market. I don't know, say one mile ahead and all that writing, that could indicate where the writing would be. And we could frame it out like it was a sign. And this could be a billboard, it could be on a tree posted, so people know how to get to the flea market. I like that one. Okay, now let's do another one. And this time we'll use an inanimate object coming to life like we did with the bomb before. And this will be for a video store. Now, a video store, you, know, you could have a sign that says video store, we're open 9 to 5 and all that, but you want a logo. And a logo is something that a business identifies with, uh, that you want to identify the business with. So if it's a video store, let's see. We'll have a videotape. How's that? With a face on it. Because that's the sort of thing we can do in cartoon world. So we'll start with a rectangular shape that is a little bit bent because it's going to be a, a video cassette. And there's no reason to make it perfectly straight because if we're making it not realistic, it could be bent. Like it has, like it's soft, like a like not a like a living thing. 
Right up here, we'll put some big eyes, because we want big expressive eyes on it. And it's looking at us. And this will be for the sign. It could be a sign for a business card. It could be for the storefront on the door. It could be on the window. All right. Now, big smile. We'll leave out the nose on this guy, too. A big lower lip. And some detail on it to make it look like a videotape. All right, now for some feet. Now, you know what? I think I'm going to add something else to this to make it really look like, have a little more punch, literally a punch. I'm going to have an arm coming straight across like that. I'm even going to give one of his eyebrows a downward look to make it look like he's a little more serious about things. And over here, that's going to be his arm. This is going to be a, like a boxing glove. And over here, I'll have the other arm up with his other hand, boxing glove like that, out. Now, what's going to make this all work very well is watch this. And I have the word pow. I'm going to splash around it like that. And let's see, this could be for Smash Hit Video Store. How's that? Put smash hit. Now I'll put a border around this one too. Yeah, I like that. I'm even going to put a little color into this guy. I'll use a little bit of red for his boxing gloves. Notice how I don't scrub the color in there either. I leave it, I go in a circular motion because it's a circular shape, and I leave that white space in the center makes it look like a little more alive and creates a little more interest for the viewer. Well, let's go put a little red up here on his cheeks. And for the video cassette, some lines like that make it look shiny. All right, I like that. Let's do another one. Uh, let me see. I got it. Oh, I know. Cartoons. Well, actually, animals in cartoons have come to represent certain feelings and emotions, like gentle as a lamb, uh, weak as a kitten, strong as an ox, and that's the one we're going to do right now. Now, we'll make an ox. Now, we'll follow along. It's very easy. I'm going to make a shape like a teardrop or a triangle with very rounded edges, and we're going to make an ox, and this is going to be for another logo for a business. Now, strong as an ox, that would mean maybe piano movers. How's that? So we can have... Strong as an ox, ox piano movers. That's the name of the business. And have his eyes down like that. Let's give him a big smile. And his eyebrows are up because he's very confident, very strong. And this little rectangle up there is where the horns are going to come out. That's what you want to have. Make him look like a big ox. Now, to make it, oh, floppy ears if I got them. Now, where to be strong, you got to give them muscles. And that's what makes it funny to see cartoon animals acting like humans. Now, obviously, an animal doesn't have arms and a body like this. People do. But we're going to cheat it a little, and that's what makes it fun. And here's his arms coming around, making a muscle. Of course, he's strong. And there's a piano mover. And it could say, Ox Piano Movers. And that could be a great business there. And you know what? I'm going to put a little color in this fellow, too. I'm going to make it a blue ox. Remember in the story of Paul Bunyan, Babe, the ox in, in his story was a blue ox. As I said, you can do things in cartoons that aren't really true. But that makes it funnier. Okay, now I have a quickie for you. We'll draw a dog for a dog grooming service. Now follow along. It'll be very easy to do. Start with a square. How's that? Right there, and that'll be for the dog's nose. And we'll darken the whole thing in, except for that one space, because it's going to be a shine. Now, right from the center of that square, make a big swirl like that, because that's going to be a smile. And then one going out this way and some whiskers. And let's make this a real silly looking dog. Let's put some lipstick on him. 
on her, just like that. And a chin. Now, for her eyes, we'll make a circular shape like that. And we'll cut it right in the center for her eyelashes. And we'll make some eyes, kind of sleepy looking, a little bit bigger maybe, just like that. And her eyebrows are up. And let's connect this a little bit. Now for her ears, let's give her floppy ears. Oh, she's beautiful. Now to make this funny, for an ad, especially for dog grooming, let's give her her hair with a bow and a couple of hairs coming up like that. And there she is. Not a very pretty sight, I know that. Put a little red for her lips. Now, actually, she's very beautiful, I think. Let's smear that in. And that's all the time we have for this. Now, next time in school, if you have to make a sign or a poster, think in terms of cartooning. Next up, the feature of the day. Stay tuned. Now, this is a fun feature to do, and it's called Make a Stamp. And I'll show you one that I did, and it's a block of wood like that, and I cut a piece of rubber out of a piece of rubber that you can buy at uh, any craft store, and I'll show you that in a moment. And I also have an ink pad here that you can get in any stationery store. Now, what I'm going to do is dip this stamp into the ink to make a few impressions. Now, watch this. Now, because it's a facial outline, I can take my pen, and I can make as many facial outlines as I want, depending upon... I have any facial expressions that I want. Just depends on the kind of mood I'm in. Let's make that guy sad. Let's make this guy happy. There you go. Now, I'll show you how to make one together. Let's make a panda bear. And this is a great one to do. Now, you'll need a few things. And number one, I just got a scrap piece of wood, about that big. And I got a scissors. You're going to have to have a scissors for this project. And some white glue. Any kind of white glue will do. And... As I said, the stamp pad, and this is a sheet right over here of the rubber that I was talking about. And this is available in any craft store, and it's about an eighth of an inch thick, not much more. It comes in colors, but the color is not important. And also, I've got some twine, regular piece of twine you can get in the hardware store as well. Now, I'm going to take a piece of wood, and I've already glued the twine down on it. About four inches, what I've done is I've cut a piece about four inches long, and I dip it into the glue and I glued it down. Now I have some other elements here and I will glue that down together. So I take some glue. This one we'll do together. Now what I'm going to do is take my scissors and out of that sheet of rubber I'll cut a shape like this and this is going to be for the panda's ear. And I've got all the other ones already done and let's glue them on. So. This one here, I'm going to dip into this and put this right up here and put this one up there like that and we can put the nose on next like that and the eyes, well they're real small pieces and the other eye and you're going to love this, wait till you see how this works and I cut a piece of twine, much smaller for the smile, and that goes on like that. Now we're not going to wait for this one to dry because I've already got a piece, I mean a stamp already done, ready to go. And here's the ink pad, and take a look at this, you're going to like this one. There you go, came out nice. And you can use this for your notepads, personal notepads, your school books, whatever you like. Now experiment on your own and see what kind of faces you can come up with. Now stay tuned for Cartoon Doodle Tricks. Today's Doodle Tricks, Word Tunes. It's a lot of fun. I had some friends stop by because they love when I draw Doodle Tricks. How you doing, guys? Hi. Okay, let's start with the word hop. H O. Now, give me an animal that hops. A rabbit. Anybody? A rabbit. Okay, that's right. Whew, I'm glad you said that. No. 
Okay, we'll put a triangle shape just like that, and two U-shapes, and some whiskers, and some cute eyes up here. And of course, this part is going to be his ear. Uh, we need another ear. Let's have that one kind of flopping over. And this will be the body. And this will be his back legs. See, all we have to do is double that line a little bit. And his front legs. And of course, this is going to be the fluffy tail. So we have to make it fluffy. And some cartoon effects. Boing. A sound effect. And there it is, Hop. You like that one? Yeah. Okay, let's do another one. This time the word will be dog. D O G. Now, what do you think I'm going to draw out of a dog? Don't say it. It's too obvious. I know what you're going to say. We're going to make a dog. That's right. And put a circle up there, and another circle there. That'll be his nose. And the part of the D will be his floppy ear. A big old smile, some whiskers, and an eye up there, an eyebrow, and this is his body, and his name is Spot. That'll be the Spot. And that's, this would be his back leg, here's his other leg peeking around, and here's his front leg. So from the word dog, oh, it's tail, wait a minute. So from the word dog, we've got a cute dog. Like that one? Okay, yeah. let's do another one. Okay, now this one here. I'll write the word B U G. Now, what do you think I'm going to draw out of that? Bugs. Bugs. That's a good guess. That's right. And right here, we'll draw from the B a B. Put his head up here, some eyes, some antenna, big old smile, and these are his wings. Another stripe outside. Like that one? Yeah. I like that one. Okay, now for the U. Well, let's see. Let's have an angry looking spider. Eyebrows down if he's angry, right? And a scowl, a frown. And here's one leg, two legs, six legs. And there's a spider. Now, from the G, this is a cute one. We're going to draw a caterpillar. Put some antenna on. That'll be a smile. Let's extend that line down a little bit. Now for the body. Now watch this. You lay the pen down. Let it work for you. Go back and forth. What could be easier? You make the caterpillar body. Have it slithering along the ground. There's a ground line. And some lines that make it look like it's slithering. And there it is. You like that? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for today. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And you at home. And for our blitz tip, when you're trying to learn something, you can't quit, right? You have to stick with something. You're not going to get better, right? Another way of saying that is, our blitz tip today is, don't quit because success may be only inches away. Look at this fella. He gave up and he was only a few inches away from success. I'm Bruce Blitz saying thanks for being with me today and help me out, guys. Keep, Keep on cartooning.